Okay, you guys, so let's go ahead and talk about our continuous random variables. Okay, so we've been working a long time with our discrete random variables, and let's just start off with the uniform because it's a good place to start off. So our uniform distribution, if we were talking about the discrete random variable, like our dice problem or something, let's see if I can count six, there we go. They had equal likelihoods of happening, and this is one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, this was discrete. We could be have a one, we could roll a two, but we couldn't roll like a one and a half. So this would be a probability mass function of our discrete uniform. Okay, so I'm going to take an analogous sample and look at continuous uniform. So we're going to not, instead of using probability mass, we're going to use probability density function. Okay, and, and we're going to come to this word density in just a section, in just a second, and this is going to be of a uniform. Okay, and once again, we're going to take an example. We'll go from 0 to 6. And maybe this is like, um, oh, I don't know. We'll say like hours, hours at airport on your trip. And this is like rolling a dice. Okay, so in order to do this, we need to go through and actually look at like what are some of the differences. So here, when we roll the dice, we could only get a specific value. Down here, when we are like waiting for hours at the airport, we could be any value in between 0 and 6. I could wait 1 hour. I could wait 1.021 hours. Uh, it really doesn't matter. I can be any value between my ranges. Okay, so this brings up an interesting concept. So over here, when we did our discrete random variables, this was a true statement. So the probability of the random variable, uh, we'll say being less than or equal to 3, is not the same thing as saying the probability of our random variable being less than 3. Okay, so one included three, one didn't include three. So the first one, we you know, sum up the probabilities of all of this happening. And the second one, this probability of being less than three, we'd say, oh, well, we're not gonna include three, so we just want this probability. And obviously, those two boxes are different sizes. Their probabilities were different. But when we come down to here with our probability density function, this comes out to actually be the same thing. Okay, and here's the reason. So let's say, you know, we've got our midpoint. Here's three or whatnot. And to find our probability, we need to look at the area below the curve. If you've taken some calculus, uh, you might find this familiar, a familiar idea with using like um, our uh, integrals in order to find the area under the curve. Um, but so from zero to three, zero, so from being less than or equal to three, we would go, okay, all the way to three and that'd be our probability. Now over here, the probability of being less than three, well, our line doesn't move. It's still at the same spot. And here's the reason. So the probability of any specific value. So I'll just say, I'll just show it in an example. So we can rewrite this statement of being less than or equal to three as saying the probability of being less than three plus the probability of the random variable being equal to three is equal to the probability of the random variable equaling three. Okay, or oh, sorry, not equaling three, let me erase that real quick. Sorry for the confusion. Less than three. Okay, so from a mathematical standpoint, if this is a true statement, this must go to zero. 
And this is a truth about um, continuous random variables, that the probability of a specific event happening in continuous random variables is always zero, which is a drastic contrast for the discrete um, random variables. Here, if I say, what's the probability of rolling a three? We'd say on a standard dice, it's one out of six. Down here, in how, uh, what's the probability of waiting exactly three hours at the airport? I would say the probability is zero. And you're never going to wait exactly three hours. If you got a you know, great enough stopwatch, you'd say, oh, we actually were there for 3.0017 hours. Or we were there just under three hours. But to be exactly a value, the probability in the continuous random variables is zero. You always need ranges with your continuous random variables uh, in order to have probability. And that's why it's called a density. In order to get some mass for our probabilities, we need a range, and then we can get mass. Up here, mass is associated with specific values. That's why the probability of rolling a five actually has a probability. Down here, we could say what's the probability of waiting between like five and six, and that could give us a probability.